Electrostatic interactions can be compared to hydrogen bonding. In hydrogen bonding, we see an attraction between positive and negative charge, but we have to keep in mind that that's due to polarity. In this case, the electrostatic interactions are an attractive force between some sort of a solute, uh, some sort of compound that dissolves into a polar solvent and that polar solvent will break apart that molecule by hydrating it and stabilizing it. And this results in an interaction which is electrostatic. So there's a positive and negative interaction and there's a repulsion between like charges. So what happens is that if we take, for example, uh, a glass of a polar solvent, for example, water, it is a polar solvent, and we add NaCl, okay, so we add sodium chloride. What happens is that once the sodium chloride is added, the water is going to break the solute-solute interactions. So it's gonna break the interaction between the sodium and the chloride it's going to come in between the two and it's going to disrupt their interaction and the water is going to form a solute uh, solute water interaction so we see that over here we see the the nacl it's split so we have the cl uh, and na plus it's the sodium chloride has dissociated into its ions and we see water associating itself with each of those ions What's important to note that this arrangement of waters around each of these ions is not random. It is ordered. And by ordered, I mean that the positive charges, the partial positive charges of the water are interacting with that negative chlorine. Because if this negative water, this partially charged negative water, if it was facing that chlorine, it would repulse it. So this is not a random orientation, it is ordered. And we have to remember that um, oxygen is a polar molecule, so it has two dipoles. Uh, the hydrogens, each of them have a partial positive and the oxygen has a partial negative. We see a similar situation happening over here with the sodium. So the partially negative oxygen in red is interacting with the positively charged sodium. So essentially opposites attract, uh, like repel. So we see that happening. So uh, another term that we should be familiar with regarding electrostatic interactions is dielectric constant. So water, it has a very high dielectric constant. And this, the definition for this is a physical property that defines the number of dipoles in a solvent. Okay, so it's the number of dipoles in a solvent. And if water has a very high dielectric constant, it essentially means that water has a lot of dipoles. And we know that because every single water molecule is polar. So, and the oxygen has a very high electronegativity, so it's pulling, its nu pulling the, nu the electrons towards its nucleus. So the oxygen has that negative charge, hydrogen has that positive charge. So we see dipoles in every single water molecule. That is why water has a very high dielectric constant. It just has a lot of dipoles. And since it has a lot of dipoles, that means it's able to interact with a lot of ions. That's why we see water interacting with ions because it ha it, because it's a water uh, has those charges and it wants to interact and it wants to become more stable. So uh, in a way, we can relate this to water's uh, property of adhesion. And the property of adhesion is essentially water binding with non-water molecules. Uh, that's essentially adhesion. So that is electrostatic interactions. We have to keep in mind that it is different from the hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is between uh, two, two, partial, two partial charges. So a partial positive and a partial negative, we see hydrogen uh, bonding interactions. Electrostatic is more in relation to charged ions that are dissolved into water, uh, like NaCl, so particles that are dissociating into their ions. Uh, and yeah, that's essentially electrostatic interactions.